Hello, and welcome to our presentation on preparing for Microsoft Copilot. My name is John Frost. I'm the CTO at Jack Frost Design, and I'll be your host for this presentation. Jack Frost Design is a digital agency that builds, restores, and enhances intranets on the M365 platform. Today, the topic is Copilot readiness. What we're going to cover is what is Copilot, what its data requirements are, what you need to do to prepare your intranet, what you need to do to prepare your users, and a few strategies for moving forward. But first, what is Copilot? Copilot for Microsoft 365 is an artificial intelligence powered assistant that helps individuals work with the primary applications of Microsoft Office. In addition to that, it works in conjunction with Microsoft Teams to offer strategic insights into complex situations and provide valuable advice. Where can you find Copilot? Well, for most Office applications, up in the ribbon, over on the right-hand side, there is a Copilot icon, which when selected, opens up a panel on the right-hand side of the application. Here you enter prompts to Copilot in order to have it facilitate the creation and analysis of Microsoft Office documents. In Microsoft Teams, it's available both on the upper left-hand corner as well as in the ribbon to the right. In Teams, it responds more like ChatGPT, providing strategic analysis and decision support with the added advantage of having access to all of your Microsoft 365 data. But why is Copilot so important? Well, Copilot has been documented to enhance the productivity of administrative office workers by 20 to 30 percent. That's roughly equivalent to an additional 48 hours of labor per employee per month. Since the average hourly wage for an office worker using Microsoft Office in a company with at least 100 employees is approximately $28, the monthly value is roughly $1,300 for a $20 license. That would be $1,300 per employee per month, and it would only improve as employees become more familiar with using Copilot. So how does Copilot work? Well, typically you're starting out in a Microsoft Office application like Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. And then, as you can see from this Microsoft diagram, you're making a request in that application which goes out to Copilot, which then checks on your individual Microsoft graph, which is Microsoft's understanding of the files and information that your specific license gives you access to reach. Once it identifies the documents you're allowed to access, it goes out to the large language model and then back to your application in Office with the information that you need in order to provide the document or the assistance you requested. It's important to understand here that when each individual is given a Copilot license, their iteration of Copilot is able to access just the documents that that individual is able to access. It's also very important to understand that there's not just one, but actually two very different versions of Copilot that are included in an individual's license. And this difference is at the heart of significant security risks that most users are unaware of. In Microsoft Office applications like Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, users can control which specific documents Copilot accesses, providing a tailored and secure experience. However, in Microsoft Teams Business Chat, Copilot operates differently. It autonomously accesses any document the user's permissions allow, making its own decisions on what information to use. This broader access can lead to unintended data exposure. Many Copilot licensees naturally assume they can control Copilot's access in Teams just as they do in Office applications. Unfortunately, this assumption is incorrect and can result in problematic outcomes if not properly managed. Microsoft emphasizes the importance of configuring and managing permissions meticulously to safeguard sensitive information. Organizations must educate their employees about these differences and implement robust data governance policies. By doing so, they can leverage Copilot's productivity benefits while maintaining strict control over sensitive information, mitigating any risks associated with its use in collaborative environments. Understanding and managing these distinctions is crucial to prevent unintended data exposure and to ensure data security. 
So when using an Office application, each employee can pick and choose the specific documents they want to use. But when they're using Teams Business Chat, Copilot is going to make the decision on its own as to which documents to consider amongst all of the documents that that individual can reach. So is your data ready for Copilot? For most organizations, the answer is no. And that's because three years ago, companies suddenly implemented procedures to allow all of their employees to work remotely. And you have to remember that Teams had just been released. OneDrive was new. Modern SharePoint was new, and there was no time for training. This means that people began working remotely without any real governance plan or strategy for exactly how they would grow their intranets, organize their documents, and keep them secure. The result is that three years later, key documents can't be found, at least not easily. The latest versions can't be determined. Many files are stored outside the organization's firewall in locations like Dropbox and Google Docs, and personal and business documents are mixed on users' OneDrives. This has resulted in environments where 60 to 70 percent of their documents are duplicates. In addition to that, 15 to 20 percent of their documents are considered to be outdated or trivial. The good relevant documents represent as little as 3 to 15 percent of the total, all as a result of the implementation of work from home strategies that didn't benefit from adequate governance. So what are the risks? Well, when using Copilot for Microsoft Office applications, employees will have to be very careful to select the correct documents amongst the clutter. When using business chat in Teams, Copilot will consider all accessible documents, leading to strategic advice being contaminated by the 85%, as well as it reaching confidential information that was poorly secured. So what are the likely results? Well, we asked ChatGPT, and it generated this list of the likely negative results when using Copilot in the type of environment we have described. Basically, it boils down to bad advice advice that's out of alignment with other organizational initiatives, slower responses due to processing large amounts of disorganized data, potential PR crises if bad strategic advice makes it outside of the organization, and ultimately poor adoption for Copilot as users become disenchanted with the results. So how do you prepare your environment? First, you can delete a lot of it, which is going to make subsequent curation a lot easier. Next, you're actually going to have to implement a document management strategy, but there are templates for this. You're going to have to build or restore elements of your intranet where the curated documents will reside. The IT department will need to work with department representatives to identify and move their curated documents. You're going to want to use software to help you tag the curated documents. The good news is that before you have to curate anything, a lot of it can be just deleted. Surveys have shown that administrative employees would delete up to 65% of their documents if they were only given the time to do it. Creating an initiative tied to an email campaign to all employees explaining the rationale and the benefits while also allocating the time is all that's required, dramatically simplifying curating the remaining documents. Next, it's essential to adopt a definite document management strategy. This includes establishing a set number of metadata columns and tags for your documents, implementing an intelligent folder structure, and using consistent naming conventions for both documents and folders. These policies should be documented and distributed across your organization. If you're interested, Jack Frost Design offers a free SharePoint document library specification that can help you deploy a consistent library structure and tagging system organization-wide. An essential part of your document management strategy will be to leverage SharePoint and OneDrive features. The use of SharePoint libraries should be promoted, not only for helpful metadata, but for the library's default version controls, which will go a long way towards eliminating document duplication in the future. The strategy will also need to clarify that employees need to remove personal documents from their OneDrive, or they risk Copilot including them when developing analysis and recommendations. Next, you're going to need to update your intranet to facilitate secure, consolidated document management. 
Most organizations are taking the approach of prioritizing their departmental SharePoint sites and recreating them one at a time, and then moving their newly curated documents into them. This is often done in a collaborative effort involving IT staff and a departmental representative that's familiar with their documents. After the new department site is created and populated, the old version is set to read only before being ultimately archived. Grooming the documents in your new libraries can be made easier by using AI to provide some of the keywords and metadata. But at this point in time, the process still requires human intervention because of how AI handles ambiguity and determines context. Achieving security in your new environment happens almost automatically when you use Microsoft best practices to create your new department sites. Department sites should be created by first creating an M365 group. This will automatically create a SharePoint site. Then telling the SharePoint site to create a companion team results in a highly secure basic building block for your intranet. The M365 group, SharePoint site, and companion Microsoft team will all automatically carry the same name, and individuals added to the M365 group are automatically contributors to the site, library, team, and channels. This results in a site that is clean, consolidated, and carries the correct permissions and membership for the department. In conclusion, the phenomenal return on investment for each Copilot license makes deployment irresistible. But Copilot demands clean data that's securely partitioned. So you're likely going to have to improve the structure of your intranet and curate your files before adding them to the new structures. In the meantime, while you improve your intranet, you're probably going to want to limit Copilot use to individuals that are trained in the risks associated with using it in an uncurated environment. We hope this information helps your organization effectively realize the potential of Copilot. If you need assistance in your adoption, we offer several services to help you speed through the process. They include document cleanup programs, intranet restoration and enhancement, Copilot workshops for governance, data prep, proper use, and oversight. If you would like to discuss any of these topics further, we invite you to book a free consultation on our website at www.jackfrostdesign.com. To keep up on this and other related topics, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's loaded with information to facilitate the management and use of the M365 platform. And thanks for watching.